Hello, this is Prasad. Welcome to Prajim Technologies. Today we will discuss about one of the very important ASP.NET interview question. What is SQL injection attack or how can you avoid SQL injection attack? SQL injection attack is very common form of hacking a web application and SQL injection attack can happen because most of the users build SQL statements dynamically by concatenating strings and how do we avoid SQL injection attack there are basically two ways use parameterized queries or use stored procedures let's look at a demo on how we can actually make SQL injection attack happen and then we will see how to solve that using stored procedures or using parameterized queries now in order to understand SQL injection attack let's build a quick demo data-driven ASP.NET web application. To do that, I have already done some preparation work. I've created a, an ASP.NET web form with this UI. I have a grid view control. I have two buttons, get all products, get product by name, and a text box. Now, when the user clicks this button called get all products, we have a table in the database called TBL product. So we have around 10 products here. We want to get all these products and show it in this grid view control when the user clicks this button. On the other hand, when the user enters a particular product name and then when he clicks get product by name, we want to get just that product. A simple data-driven ASP.NET web application. Let's go ahead and build this and then we will see how to actually inject SQL. Now to do that, Let's write simple ADO.NET code. In order to interact with the database, we have to import certain namespaces using system.data is one, and the other one is using system.data.sql client. And finally, in order to read the web.config file, we need to import system.configuration namespace. Now, in web.config file, I already have a connection string called the DB connection string set up to interact with my local database. And I'm using integrated security. Now let's read the value of this connection string in our application code. To do that, string connection string equals configuration manager dot connection strings of our DB connection string. dot connection string so let's go ahead and build our SQL connection object SQL connection con equals new SQL connection and in order to build the connection object we need the connection string and we need to build the SQL command so SQL command CMD equals new SQL command and the command that we want to execute is basically to select all the products from the database. So select star from TBL product and we want to use this connection object to execute this command. So open the connection object and execute the command. Once we execute the command, set the result of this command as the data source to our grid view one control. So grid view one dot data source equal to the result of that command execution and then data bind on the grid view control and this is simple ADO.NET code and close the connection so if you look at this code this is pretty simple code all we are doing is we are reading the connection string value building a connection object and then building a SQL command and then opening the connection, executing the command, taking the output and setting that as a data source to the grid view control, calling data bind and closing the connection. Now let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. So now when we say get all products, it should give us all the products that are there in the database. Okay, now we have to implement this. I type in, let's say for example, pens, and then when I say get product by name, I should be able to get that product alone. So let's go ahead and see how to build that. Now, we have another button which does that, get product by name. So let's implement that button click. So when I click that button, what should happen? It should get a product from the table, 
where the name of the product equals whatever the user has typed into this text box so let's write this code so obviously this code will exactly look the same except the command will vary here we'll say select star from tbl product where name of the product equals whatever the user has typed into that particular text box so since name is a varchar field and when we send this command to SQL Server, varchars needs to be within single quotes. That's why we are building that SQL, uh, sorry, that single quote into the SQL command dynamically. So what we are saying, select star from TBL product where name of the product equal to whatever the user has typed into the text box. Now this is the statement that will actually invite SQL injection attack. Since we are building our SQL statements dynamically into the text box, the users can type SQL and then get it executed against the database. If a malicious user types something, you know, a SQL code into the text box, it can get executed against the database and we may lose our data. Let's look at that in action, actually. Now let's go ahead and run this. So if the user types you know just the name of the product there is no problem it works fine as expected okay so when we say get all products we get all the products let's say for example if I want books I type in books when I say get product by name you know what happens when I click this button this particular piece of code gets executed okay so since we typed books into the text box what happens select star from TBL product where name equals books and that particular statement gets executed here okay now just imagine what's going to happen so this is the command which gets executed so let's get rid of all the SQL so select star from TBL product where name equals whatever the user has typed into the text box so let's get rid of this now in our example until now the user has typed into the text box something like books and now when we executed that we get that one no issues everybody is happy but just imagine if the user look at this the user has typed just books into the text box now just imagine if the user has typed something like this for example let's say pens and a single quote and then a semicolon and then delete from tbl product and then in order to escape this single quote a comment now if the user types something like this into the text box what's going to happen now this one will be treated as one statement semicolon this one will be treated as another statement when this statement gets executed the entire data in TBL product gets wiped out now here the user is a little considerate he is just deleting the data from the table what if in case he has typed drop database and then database name the database itself would have gone and then to escape this single this to comment and and then he just typed this comment here to to ignore the execution of the single code okay so we can actually do that now let's say for example i'm saying Pants, close a single quote, semicolon to indicate the end of the first SQL statement, and then maybe something like delete from TBL product, and then to comments. So now, if we go ahead and say get product by name, we get our product, which is pants, but if you go ahead and say select star from products your table is basically empty so when I say get all products we don't get anything back because the table is empty we have just injected SQL into this text box which wiped out our data okay and why did this happen because we are dynamically building SQL by concatenating strings that the end user is providing us with so this is extremely dangerous now how to solve this problem just use parameterized queries or stored procedures okay let's see how to use parameterized queries and solve this 
to use parameterized queries, I just need to change the a little bit. Okay, so I'm saying select star from TBL product where name equals at name. This is the parameter. Now we need to supply a value for this. So this concatenation will no longer be there. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. So our SQL statement is select star from TBL product where name equals at name. And then since our SQL command right now is expecting a parameter, we have to supply a value for that. So in order to do that, we can say command dot parameters dot add. This expects a new SQL parameter object. So a new SQL parameter object. And we need to specify the name of the parameter and the value for that. So in our case, the name of the parameter is at name. And the value for that is basically coming from text box one. That's it. So this simple change can avoid the SQL injection attack from happening. So let's see how actually it works. Now before we do that, since our table is empty right now, we need to put some data there. I already have some SQL statements which will inject data. So we have all our 10 rows back now. Let's go ahead and run the application. So when I run the application now, and when we click get all products, we get all the 10 products back. And let's say I want books, for example. I get books. Now let's say I'm trying to inject SQL, something like pens, whatever we have typed before. Okay. Now, when I say get product name, look at what's going to happen. When I say get product name, it basically will not show anything because whatever the user has typed into this text box, even the SQL, the malicious code that the user has typed in, this entire stuff right now is treated as a value for this parameter called at name. Now, whatever content the user has typed in is not treated to form our SQL command. SQL command is already formed. This is the SQL command. Now, after building this, we just need a value for this parameter. And where is the value coming from? Here. Whatever the user types in here will be completely treated as a value for this parameter. So the possibility of SQL injection attack is negligible. It's almost not there. So we are capable of avoiding SQL injection attack simply by using parameterized queries. And now, if you want, we can have a look at the table. Our 10 rows are still there. And when I say get all products, we still get back all our products. So using stored procedure, using parameterized queries can solve SQL injection attack. Another way is to use stored procedures. Stored procedures are better for several reasons. Number one, they can avoid SQL injection just like parameterized queries. Number two, they can reduce network traffic between the web server and the database server. If you have your statements inside a stored procedure from the database server, I'm sorry, from the web server to the database server, you just need to send the name of the stored procedure. You don't have to send the lengthy SQL statements. For example, in reality, a stored procedure can span hundreds of lines. So if it is there inside a stored procedure, you know, from your application code, you just specify the name of the stored procedure. The definition, all the lines will be there within that stored procedure on the database server. So it can reduce network traffic drastically. Another advantage of using stored procedures is, you know, they can be reused. Since the code is there in the form of a stored procedure, you can reuse that stored procedure on multiple pages without having to duplicate. Maintenance will be much easier. And another advantage from a performance standpoint, because, you know, stored procedures can have execution plans cached for a certain period of time, and your stored procedures can benefit from performance, you know, when compared with ad hoc SQL queries, because for ad hoc SQL queries, execution plans need to be generated every time you execute them. But for stored procedures, they can be cached, and hence stored procedures tend to execute much faster than your ad hoc SQL queries. So keeping all these in mind, it's always better to actually use stored procedures rather than ad hoc SQL queries. Let's look at a quick demo of how to use a stored procedure. Now, in order to use a stored procedure, we first need to have that stored procedure created. So let's create a simple stored procedure. So let's say create proc sp get product by name at name of the 
product and let's say where care of 30 maybe as begin and and what do we want we want to select a product from the table where name equals at name so this is our stored procedure so let's go ahead and run that and to quickly test if it is working as expected let's pass in pens for example and execute the stored procedure all right it's working so we can use the stored procedure now if you look at the stored procedure it expects one parameter so to call the stored procedure so in the command object instead of this we'll specify the name of the stored procedure and another thing is we need to tell the stored procedure that we are executing a stored procedure the command object so the command object dot command type equals command type enum dot stored procedure so this will tell the command object all right you're not executing a SQL statement instead you're executing a stored procedure and the parameters for that stored procedure is the same thing at name so this will remain as it is so now when we go ahead and run we will have the same kind of an output the SQL injection attack cannot happen now so when I say get all products we should get all products when I say get product by name let's say for example books in this case it we should be able to get books on the other hand if somebody tries to inject SQL you know just like how we have done before you know nothing will happen because the entire value that the user has typed into this text box will now be treated as a value for that parameter at name and hence there is no product which matches this name and we don't get anything back but the data is still there no SQL injection attack so to sum up SQL injection attack basically can happen if users try to build SQL statements dynamically by concatenating strings together and how to avoid SQL injection attack there are two ways use parameterized queries or use stored procedures but always prefer stored procedures uh, over anything because of the various advantages that we have discussed until now thank you very much for this for watching this video see you next time bye bye